Hey, I'm Charlie. Hi, I'm Paul. And we're never easy. Today we're going to be diagnosing some running issues on this VW bus. <laughs> So today we're diagnosing a uh, running issue on a carbureted car. This is an air-cooled Volkswagen motor with dual carbs, but these uh, tests apply to pretty much any carbureted automobile. So the first thing we're going to check is make sure that it has air. You need air, spark, and fuel. So pop the air cleaner off of this thing. Take our element off and check it. One trick we use is holding it up to the light and you can see light through it. So that's totally clean. So it's not having any issues getting air. Then the next thing we would check is fuel. Um, what you can do is film down the carburetor throat and actuate your throttle. Have somebody push the pedal or something like that. Uh, depending on your vehicle application, you might not be able to do both at the same time. And uh, film down and see if you have fuel squirting in. If you do, that means the carburetor is filling up, which means the fuel pump is good. And you can eliminate testing your fuel pump for no reason. Um, Alright, let's go check the fuel. So we uh, checked the throttle, or worked the throttle, and now it's, we can tell it's getting fuel. Uh, you know, you just look down the barrel, down here, and then you work your throttle by hand, and it'll squirt inside the carburetor, and you can see the fuel squirting down the throat of the car. The next step we would do is pull one of the spark plug wires off, and then hold the metal contact near the distributor, and have a... Uh, Helper, crank the ignition. So you can see the spark jumping from this metal to the metal down inside of the cap. So you'll see a spark jump across there and you'll know if your coil and your distributor and points or uh, electronic ignition, depending on what you have on your car, is working or not. This car has a fairly good spark, so we know that's not our problem. All right, also, uh, one of the easy things to check on a Volkswagen especially, but on your regular cars too, is uh, double check your fuel filter before you uh, get too deep into it, before you get the car hot. They're easy to check, they're easy to change, they're inexpensive. This one actually, the filter was pretty black, we couldn't even really see inside of it, so we uh, changed it out already. Uh, we'll give you a shot of that in a second here, we cut it open to see what was inside. All right, so we broke this filter open. You obviously see that this color is not the same as this color. So this is very black. There's also a little sediment down on the bottom too. So, okay, so our next uh, step, what we're going to do is fire it up and we're going to pull plug wires off one by one, starting with number one and working our way to, uh, up and uh, find out which one of the cylinders seems to be uh, Whichever one has the least effect on the running, you know, is the cylinder that's not running well. This works with pretty much any car. I'm gonna fire it up and check that out. So we fired it up and we pulled plug wires in sequential order and we figured out that this cylinder, which on the Volkswagen is number four cylinder, is uh, not running or not running well. And uh, so the next step is to try and figure out why it's not running well. Uh, first thing we do with the set of Webers is uh, check the idle jet and see if it's plugged up. So we're going to pop that out and we'll give you a little shot of what it looks like the idle jet out of the car and uh, how to clean it out. Alright, so on a Weber IDF, well, this is actually an empty carburetor, it's a copy of the IDF, we uh, pop the idle jets out. This one has hex head idle jet holders. Uh, pretty typically, it'll be a flathead screwdriver slot in the end of the idle jet, but this one has a hex head. So we put the wrench on there and we crack it loose and we pull it out with 
you know, pull it out with your fingers or the wrench or whatever you got to take it out with. And uh, keep in mind there's an O-ring on there. You don't want to lose that O-ring. So you get a hold of your flathead. This is a separate carburetor off of the car. We uh, This is the flatheaded slot that I was telling you about. Um, occasionally you'll find one where it has the hex head and the flathead slot, which is the ideal setup for an idle jet holder. Um, unscrew it. As I said before, you got to watch out for that O-ring. This one's unscrewing all the way, and it's kind of difficult. That means the O-ring is stuck inside of the carburetor. So you would take it out, and be careful as you're pulling it out. Use the end of the jet to catch the O-ring so the O-ring doesn't get lost. And then I immediately roll them down to the base again so that they don't get lost. Then you separate out your jet from your holder. And there you can see, typically, this end hole will get plugged. They do have holes on the sides also. So we will clean that out next over on the bench. All right, so now we got the idle jet and the holder sitting on the bench. We'll take what's essentially a pin drill or jet drill. It's a little holder and holds these little um, drill bits or uh, pick bits. We find one smaller than the hole, one of your smaller bits. And you poke it through and don't poke it all the way in just clean it out a little bit make sure it goes through you can even check those side holes although the side holes are pretty easily visible and then you hold it up to the light you should be able to see through it and then what we like to do get a can of brake cleaner or a carb cleaner I've actually taken the little red stick and ground the tip down on the belt sander so that it will poke into the end of the jet. And you, There's a slot on either side for tension when it's in the holder. Cover those with your fingers, these little slots. And then you let's do this. shoot your brake cleaner through there. And you can see it's coming out of all three holes so you know it's not plugged up anymore. Put it back in the holder and reinstall it in the carburetor. Alright, so this motor has an aftermarket 09 distributor and the dual Webers are aftermarket so they're not really applicable but let me also mention get yourself a good quality, if it's a VW, a Bentley manual or find a factory manual for any of your other kind of cars. Um, uh, not so much your Chilton books, they're kind of generic. If you want to get real specific information, get hold of a real manual. Um, on a Volkswagen, they are not hydraulic lifters. So when we get a new customer or a customer who's working on their own car occasionally, we'll uh, check the valve adjustment before we do anything uh, after letting it cool for a couple hours. And then we also check the timing on this car and we found out the timing was heavily advanced. And so we set the timing back where it was supposed to be and that considerably helped the running. Um, then the next, uh, we put the idle jet back in already at this point, and we're about to fire it up and see how it runs. And uh, since the idle jet that we originally took out of here was totally plugged up, we're fairly certain we found the problem. So one of the other things we do with a customer's car that we haven't worked on before, or that we're trying to find a problem and we don't know what it is right off the bat, we take it and uh, we'll put the timing light on it and double check the timing on the Volkswagen. This one has a degree wheel so you can read the timing off of the pulley. It's really easy, super handy. We will set the uh, timing to 32 to 34 degrees total advance. That's revving it and then let it off and see where the initial timing is and that will also give you a uh, idea of whether or not your distributor is advancing correctly or not. So you need a timing gun that has an adjustable setting by the way. So we're going to go ahead and fire this thing up now. Hit it. So it looks like it's running a lot better. We're going to go ahead and shut it off. If you're uh, doing this in your garage or uh, another shop area, situation make sure you always have adequate ventilation 
Maybe throw a fan if you're doing it in your garage at home because you don't want to suffocate yourself. But it uh, looks like it's running on all four cylinders and revs up pretty good. This is a Volkswagen motor with a set of dual Webers. We've already gone over. The uh, Webers have a lot of other tuning issues. You need to set your linkage. You need to synchronize them. Uh, jets actually will need to be changed in order to run correctly from whatever you got out of the box at the store. But if you're out in the sand and your car already runs good and all of a sudden it quits running good, this is how to clean out your idle jet, which is probably what it is. Um, so there you go. So how many times do they say um, 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 uh, and uh, um is uh, we uh, uh, um, 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 um. um. Um, um, it doesn't look like it's Ow, gee. And I think that's about it. Like and subscribe. Are you two? <laughs>